the Supreme Court once again getting involved in this debate over you know, the role of religion in America, what exemption religions have in terms of what they're allowed to do and still receive money from the government in a variety of forms. So we have that now and it has to do with this foster care agency. It's a Catholic foster care agency and whether they're allowed to ban basically who they're working with. So the Supreme Court said that Philadelphia violated the First Amendment when it froze a contract with a Catholic foster care agency that refused to work with same sex couples as potential foster parents because the agency believes that marriage should be between a man and a woman. So this is this is the sort of exemption that we've seen in other cases. Um, but they are once again wading into those waters. And so uh, it was a unanimous ruling, by the way. Um, the liberals, the conservatives all believe that Philadelphia was in the wrong for taking away this contract. Let's give you a little bit more details about it. The case began back in 2018 when the city learned from a Philadelphia Inquirer reporter that two of the 30 different agencies that it had previously contracted with to provide foster care services. Um, Catholic Social Services, part of the Archdiocese of Philadelphia, and Beth and Beth Christian Services had policies against certifying married same-sex couples as foster parents, citing religious uh, objections to gay marriage. So one of the two, uh, Bethany Christian Services, changed its rule and uh, started working with these couples, but the other, Catholic Social Services, uh, didn't. And they said that they're not going to change that. In response to the freeze, uh, they lost the business from the city. The foster care agency and a group of foster parents filed suit, arguing the move violated their First Amendment rights. Now, the third US Circuit Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the city and found that it had a non discrimination policy that it was adjudicating in a neutral fashion. But then it was kicked up to the Supreme Court, and literally all of them believe that that was not the case. Viviana, thoughts? It's absolutely disgusting. Um, this is not a business, these are children's lives. And as you know, John, I used to work as a social worker. And believe it or not, even in Los Angeles County, at one point, we did not allow same sex couples to foster, adopt, foster or adopt. It's called foster mm -hmm. adopt. Um, it's absolutely horrendous. We have so many children in this country that are in need of homes, healthy, loving, supportive parents, and to sit on the laurels of religion to say that these children should not have families that can love and support and give them a lifetime of a family is absolutely disgusting. I cannot understand how you would even call yourself a Christian when you would rather children suffer in orphanages and group homes, end up on the streets with nobody at all for you to even say that it is wrong. I don't care what you believe, these are children who need help. What would Jesus do? Ask yourself that, mm -hmm. and he certainly would not close the door on children. If these are good people who pass background checks, who are willing to take children into their homes, let them do it. These kids need it. It's absolutely disgusting and vile that it is even considered in 2021. Right. I, it upsets me every single time I read a story like this. This has happened all over the country, and it really takes a lot of support from the community. It, it, just to talk about it being a business, like oh, we have a contract, we have this, it's disgusting. You should be providing a service to your community. That is why you're a tax exempt institution. To be sitting there thinking we're losing money because we don't get the contract, because we don't want them to be same sex couples, we don't wanna confuse them. Guess what, there are kind of normal, typical cis couples who have toxic homes, who don't have healthy relationships. Are you worried about them? Let's look at that. No, you're just gonna, I've, I've had cases where children were placed in homes and they ended up getting abused by yeah. male female couples. So it has nothing to do with their sexual identity, their gender, none of that. It, this is a really disgusting way to sort of flex your homophobia and your transphobia or whatever phobias you have out there and it needs to be eradicated. It's, it's disgusting to me and it's hurting children at the end of the day. It is. Yeah, if it's making it harder to place them, that is totally true. Now, uh, look. It technically, in terms of this, um, you know, I, I'm not a legal expert. I'm certainly not an expert on SCOTUS and how they adjudicate laws. Um, we have Adrian Lawrence on quite often because she is a, a legal expert. She says that the way the regula the non discrimination regulation is written by Philly is uh, flawed in some fairly obvious ways. She says it's basically on them to fix it. Um, I, I question whether the fix. I don't know what they could say that would stop the Supreme Court from saying, well, it's their religious right. They can do what they want. I don't know. Maybe there is something. And, and hopefully we can have Adrian well, or, you know or I say? around to talk about it. But I say if that's the case, then guess what? Religious organizations don't get to have, uh, you know, 
companies, I'll call them companies, mm-hmm. you know, contracts, then you don't get to work with the foster care system. Oh, if Viviana, you're- I'm totally with you. I'm just, I'm just describing <laughs> no, the whole I, thing about the legal case. None I'm just of saying this they shouldn't be at all. Any sense to me? No, I know, um, I know so you agree. They say it's it's my religious belief that these couples can't be together, so I am not going to place a kid with you. What, let me ask you a serious question: What makes it their sincere religious belief? What it's, make like is it is it is it a spectrum where it's like more or less sincere? So if one church, so if that church says I'm not going to do that, what if another says, um, Oh no, this couple's interracial. I'm not going to that. I'm not going to place a kid exactly. with them. That's my sincere religious belief. Like there is literally no difference between those two things, except that we say one is sincere and another, by virtue of the fact that we find it to be abhorrent, isn't sincere anymore. I got news for you. There are some racist that has sincere, sincerely racist people in this country, but we don't care about the sincerity because it's awful BS. And we should apply that same standard to this too. It's not on us to just let kids languish in these facilities for God knows how long until various religions get their act together on it. It just, it, it's totally. Didn't just whatever you pope, want is your belief. Didn't the new pope say something about homosexuality recently? Like it was okay. Like I thought the, we were the past pope this. Unfortunately, has gone so <laughs> back and forth on a number of different things. Sometimes here's he puts their, out these statements that are. Here's their argument, though, John. These these Christian arguments that same sex couples shouldn't raise children. That I guess they're afraid that they're going to raise gay children. When in fact. How many male female couples have produced gay children? I mean, it really has nothing to do with the sexual identity or of your your family. I mean, it's it's a personal thing. So I just think, fine, you want to say that it's your religious objection? Then guess what? You don't get to be in this business. You don't get to help foster kids. You know, pack them sack lunches and let other organizations take care of them in a fair and balanced way, so we can get these kids homes and families. It's just disgusting. I, I I don't. I'll talk to anybody all day about this. You're wrong if you believe that because of your religious beliefs that children shouldn't have homes because you don't like the home they're in. Then I hope you're taking all those kids in, and you're not. I know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.